cooperate. All right, hello and welcome. We're here at Sunray Park in Ahwatukee on the edge of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, my name is Shauna. I'll be guiding you through. This is our Fit Essentials Basics class. Anyone wearing the blood flow band? We just added air, so you wanna go ahead and do that now. We'll keep that in for the first 20 minutes and then I'll let you know when we're gonna let it out. If you have a long band, we're gonna be using that in our second circuit. Otherwise, let's go ahead and start seated here today. So when you're ready, go ahead and come to the edge of your chair, take a little seat. Sit right up on those sit bones and we're gonna do our breathing cat or seated cat cow to start. So as I sit up nice and tall, I'm gonna draw the stomach in, go ahead and place the hands on the bottom of the knees or the bottom of the thighs. And then as you breathe out, you're gonna pull your belly in, bow your head down. And as you breathe in a nice soft arch, kind of glide the hands up the thighs, draw those shoulders back two or three more times, breathing out, bowing down, belly draws in, breathing in looking up, squeeze those shoulders back. Wonderful, twice more. Trying to move in sync with that breath. Almost, and then one more time, bow it down and forward, chin in. Nice deep breath in through the nose as you sit tall, good. We're gonna stay seated. And next we're gonna do a little ankle roll. So we wanna lift one leg up off the ground, interlace those hands, activate that mid back. So squeeze those shoulders back to hold that leg up. And now we're gonna rotate that ankle around. Go about 10 times one way and then switch. I'm gonna help this boy get unwrapped here. Oh, buddy, there you go. Lay down. Rotate that ankle the other way. And then when you're ready, switching legs. Set that foot down, lift that other foot up. Remember to engage that mid back, kind of a little sneaky exercise, waking up the mid back muscles, good postural support, and rotate the other way. A couple little clicks and pops in there, all quite common. Awesome job. From here, last stretch we're gonna do from seated and then we're gonna make our way to standing. We're gonna do our seated forward fold. So just keep the feet flat on the ground, Draw the stomach in. You're gonna start again with the hands on the bottoms of the knees, bottoms of the thighs, and then we'll slide down the legs, bowing that head down, reaching for the toes, and then breathe into your back. Ah, give me one more nice big breath. When you're ready, walk the hands up the legs, come back up to seated. And now we're gonna make our way to standing. We're gonna start with some marching. If you need to sit and march, you can as well. Alrighty, a little bit of more stretching, a little bit more blood flow here as we get moving together. So as you come up to standing, go ahead and bend those elbows, bring the hands to the side. And then when you're ready, we're gonna do our pause march, not the cross body punch yet. And we're gonna just lift one leg up, go nice and slow. Sorry, Diana, not the cross body till next round. Just keep those hands at the side like you're trying to move in slow motion, kind of working some good control through those hips and then practicing the alternating. So as one arm reaches up, the other leg reaches up. Good. Sometimes it's harder to move slow than it is to move fast. Two, one, and rest. Good job. We're gonna work our windmills next. So walk your feet nice and wide, just outside the hips. Bend down into your legs, breathe in as you spread your arms nice and wide. And now we're gonna practice that forward bow, bowing at the waist, bringing your hand towards the opposite knee, squeeze the glutes as you stand tall. Good, so I'm gonna show you from the side. I wanna be hinging, pushing my butt back, or the hips back, and then standing all the way up. Try to squeeze the tush as you stand tall, really help open up those hips. Good, breathing in as you bow down, reaching for that opposite leg, breathing out as you stand tall. Maybe one more on each side. Very nice. When you finish that second side, go ahead and rest. Walk your feet back in. We're gonna do our step jacks or our arm circles next. So we wanna get those arms all the way up, touch the index fingers in front of the, in front of the belly, and then try to touch those fingers up to overhead. You can do the steps if you want, stepping in, stepping out. I step in as I bring the lay arms together, I bring the feet together. And then as I reach up to overhead, I step out. Good, out and in, nice full circles of those arms. 
Good. Breathe. Nice, Shirley. Open and close. Great, Diane. Moving well, Laura. And take a pause. Awesome. Next, we're going to open up those hip flexors. So stay standing with me. Let's have you mirror me. Take your left foot. Nice big step forward. Right foot back. And go ahead and rock back onto that right heel. Draw that stomach in. Now we're going to cross the arms, bringing them up to the shoulders. We're going to rock the hips back, rock the hips forward, and then just gently rotate your body towards that front leg. Turning through that torso, turn the head and neck. Breathe a couple of times. Oops, careful there. And then unwind, shake it out. And then we'll do the same thing. Stay on this side, lift up, reach the arms, and gently rotate. There you go. Good, good adjustment, Laura. Turning that head and neck. And rest. Great job. Walking that back leg in, in between sides, just a little hip circles. You can do these seated as well. Loosening up the hips. Good, and then take it the other way. Nice and smooth that other direction. Wonderful. All right, let's balance out those hips. Same thing, other side. Now it would be your left leg steps back. Lift up to the chest, cross those arms over. From the side, I kind of rock the hips back, rock them forward, and then get that torso rotation. Turning the head and neck, squeezing that trail hip. Couple of breaths and then you'll unwind, relax it down, send the hips back, lift the hips, lift the arms and a gentle rotation. Good, rotating away from that trail leg. When you're ready, unwind and rest. Nice job. All right, you can either stay standing or take a seat if you want a little bit of a break. We're gonna do that overhead reach, our apple picking, reaching one arm up, no weights on this set. On round two, as we move through a similar sequence, we're gonna have a little bit of variation. If you wanna pick up some weights for round two, you can practice that overhead press. Otherwise, you can take another 15 seconds or so here, just opening those shoulders, giving a little bit of a gentle side bend. Ah, wonderful. Great work. And two, one, and take a rest. Let's go ahead and grab a drink of water. And then we're going to be back to our march. If you want to do it from seated, you can do that march from seated on round two. Now we're going to have that cross body punch. All right, so either sit or stand nice and tall. Go ahead and bring those arms to the sides. And then when you're ready, you're going to pick one leg up, punch the arm across the body, trying to keep those hands right about shoulder height. And especially those of you that are standing, really think about drawing that belly in. Help with that balance as you lift that leg up. Good. And now you tune in with that breathing, trying to exhale as you punch the arm across the body. Good. Ten seconds left. One more each arm and pause. Good job, shake out those arms. We're moving into our windmills next. So we did this the first round, same idea on round two, walking those feet out, anchor down to those legs, draw the stomach in, breathe in as you spread those arms nice and wide. And now when you're ready, you're gonna hinge at those hips, hand comes across, start by reaching for the knee. And then if you feel like you're a little bit more flexible this round, you can reach just a little bit lower. Bowing down, hinging at the hips, squeeze the glutes as you stand tall. Over and up. Good. Nice, Shirley. Good, Diane. Maybe one more on each side. Ah, Laura froze up on us for the today. Hopefully we'll get her back here in a second. And everybody rest. Inching those feet in. We're gonna go back to those step jacks. I prefer to have those arm circles come up to overhead. If anyone doesn't feel right going up to overhead, you can move into what we call our seal jacks, where you step those arms nice and wide to the side. Otherwise, up and down. One little moose here really wound himself up. Give me just a second. Keep it moving, though. <laughs> nice work. Circling it around. And three. Two, 
one and pausing there. Good job. We're gonna lead out the hip flexor openings just one time, but now we're gonna go back to a toe touch. We did it from seated earlier in the session. Now we're gonna do it from standing. So walk those feet in, really make sure you draw the belly in. We wanna have the toes pointing forward. I'm gonna have just a little bend in my knees. And then when you're ready, hands slide down the legs, bow the head down and just nice and steady, reaching down for the feet. Only go down as far as you feel comfortable. Never ever trying to force anything in our body, just keeping ourselves nice and limber. And then when you're ready, slide the hands back up the legs, squeeze the glutes as you stand tall. And we're gonna do that toe touch one more time. Draw the belly in, bow that head down. See if your body wants to reach maybe just a little bit farther on the second time through. Ah. Pausing for one breath in the bottom. On that next inhale, start to make your way back up to standing. Super. And then our overhead reach is next as discussed. If you wanna grab some light weights, go ahead and pick up some nice light weights. You can sit down for this option as well, but I'm gonna show it standing. Feet about hip width apart. You're gonna bring those hands up to your shoulders, draw that stomach in. And then when you're ready, we'll press one arm up and then the other arm up. Squeeze the glutes. We're gonna go a little bit longer on this interval. It's our only overhead work of the session. So we're trying to squeeze the glutes, keep those shoulders moving. Excellent, Shirley, good. Holding that weight up high by the shoulder. Nice, Diane. Elbows point ahead. And then try to still engage that lower body. So see if you can kind of like flex your thighs, squeeze your tush. Like you're gonna show off your muscles to someone. You're gonna like flex the thigh and be like, man, feel that muscle. Push. <laughs> and two, one, and everybody rest. Fantastic, one and set it down. I don't have a chair here to demo with, but next we're gonna open up the inner thighs. If I were at home with my chair, sometimes I would just hold on to that chair as I walk the feet nice and wide. We're gonna do that inner thigh stretch where you kind of do a little side lunge here. So if you feel better to hold on to something, otherwise walk the feet out, make sure you keep that soft bend the knees. And now I'm gonna either hold on to my chair or I'm gonna reach those arms out as I just very subtly bend into like a little mini side lunge, sinking into my heel and pushing that knee nice and wide. Good. One or two more each way. Eyes try to look up and forward on this one. Good job. Sometimes it's very subtle. And when you're ready, go ahead and rest those arms down, walk those feet back in, and let's take a seat. Grab a drink of water as you come on down. I don't know why I set this up where I'm like backlit. I apologize. It's kind of a little bit of a silhouette view here today. I guess I'm biased because I like my tree here. I can stretch against the tree, but we'll change it up for tomorrow. All right, friends, as you finish that drink of water, we're gonna stretch the hips a bit and then we're gonna make our way back up to standing. So let's go ahead and pick a leg. I'm gonna start with my right. If you're mirroring me, it'd be your left. Pick it up, we're gonna do our glute stretch where I'm just gonna try to cross that foot over the opposite knee, adjust the hands to the outside of the leg and then sit up as tall as you can as you hug the leg trying to pull that knee to the opposite side of the body. The whole idea is to get a little bit of an opening in your outer hip. Just keeping those shoulders down out of the ears, draw that chin in. And a couple more breaths. Breaths, Set my words here. Ah. Good, when you're ready, setting that leg down in between sides, we'll do our little windshield wipers of the leg. So walk the feet nice and wide. Kind of come up onto the balls of the toes, and then you're gonna gently lower your knees to one side, up and across, lower your knees to the other, over and back. Excellent, over and back. Super, and then when you're ready, we'll do the same little glute stretch on that opposite leg. So now if it's my left, it might be your right. Drawing those shoulders back, I'm trying to cross that foot over the opposite knee. Make sure you reposition your hands, the outer aspect of that knee, and then sitting as tall as you can, hug that leg in. 
Eyes up, gentle breathing. Notice your shoulders, make sure you really draw them down out of those ears. And three, two, one, and rest. Nice job. Set those legs down, unwind. All right, our next series, you're gonna wanna have that long band. It's gonna be our last exercise. We'll come down to the chair. The first exercise is gonna be our deadlift. I'm gonna work it with like a good morning on the first round because we're gonna have three rounds to practice this. And then our second exercise, make sure you have a station around. It's gonna be that elevated push up. I'll be using the bench here. That's a little bit low for several people. So you can either use a wall or like a back of the couch tabletop position. Welcome back, Laura. So when you're ready, making your way up to standing, I'm gonna go unweighted for this first round. If you're comfortable with this hinging pattern and want to use weights, you're welcome to it. Otherwise, we're gonna start with that. We call it our good morning pattern. So I'm gonna place those feet right about hip width apart. Make sure you draw that stomach in, establish just a nice little mini bend in your knees. And now we're gonna cross those arms over your shoulders. Those of you that aren't using weights this round, breathing in, you're gonna bow forward, raising those arms up as you send those hips back and then drive the feet, squeeze the glutes standing tall, good. Kind of look down as you bow forward, still trying to lift those arms, encourage that mid back to stay nice and tall. Yep. And then when you can, just turn sideways to your camera, Shirley, so I can see that back angle a little bit better. Good job. Breathing in, raising up, long spine. Nice, Laura. Good, Diane. And then just try to look down instead of looking at the screen. Let that be my job to kind of watch everyone here. Excellent. 10 more seconds, no rush. Controlling down and then drive through those legs, squeeze the glutes as you stand up nice and tall. Beautiful, final time. Breathing in, hips send back, breathing out all the way up. Awesome job. All right, as mentioned, we're gonna work that upper body push next. So find a spot that you can support on. As you come on over, you're gonna place one hand underneath each shoulder, walk those feet back. And if anything is going on with the shoulders, just hold this top plank position. So make sure your position's nice and strong. If you do feel like you can lower down, you're gonna start to pull those elbows in towards your sides, draw the shoulders back so they don't shoot forward. Draw that belly in as you lower that chest down. And then nice and strong as you push away, drive those hands, driving up and away. Good, 15 more seconds. I don't want you to go to failure on these. So if you feel like, okay, I can't quite get up on the next one, I don't know. So holding tall at the top. Otherwise, I mean, one or two more reps. Squeeze that tush all the way down, all the way up, and take a little pause. Go ahead and come off the hands for a moment. Shake it out, but stay there because we got to have our mountain climbers next. So then we're going to come back into position, walk those feet back. And then same idea, you can either hold the top of the plank or now we're gonna coordinate the lower body, pulling the knee towards the same side elbow, breathing out as you lift that knee up. Instead of moving as fast as you can here, try to move with some control, keeping those hips nice and level, keeping those arms locked out. Wonderful. Good, Prue, looking strong. Maybe one more on each side. And three, two, one, everybody rest. Awesome job. As you come up, we're gonna all sit down. Try to find your band, if you have a long band that you can use. We're gonna do our seated row next. Those of you wearing the blood flow bands, we're gonna finish this seated row with the band and then we'll take those off or at least let the air out. So wrap it around one foot, sit up nice and tall, up out of those sit bones. Starting with your arms extended, palms down, elbows nice and straight. And then when you're ready, we're gonna breathe out, drawing those elbows back, breathe in as you reach forward. I like to rotate through those hands. So engage those biceps a little bit more, rotating the hands up as I squeeze the shoulders back behind me seeing how far I can pull the elbows back. Beautiful. Breathing in as you reach out, breathing out as you draw back. Notice that upper neck position of the head. 
common to kind of go neck extended as I reach forward. So keep that chin in, eyes looking up and ahead. Go ahead, about 15 more seconds. You can pause in that back position, breathing through it. Sometimes you'll feel that nice burn here. Sometimes you don't feel a whole lot, but we're working those shoulders, keeping that mid back nice and strong. Two, one, and everybody pause. Nice job. You are wearing the bands, go ahead and lift the air out, push that little white nozzle in. You wanna just rip them all off, you can. I'm gonna take the upper body off first. Those of you not wearing the bands, while you're waiting for people to kind of get set, you can do that seated little side stretch here, that like apple picking exercise that we did earlier. So kind of stretch your body while you're waiting. And then when you do get ready for the next set, we're gonna make our way back to standing. We did our good mornings on the first round and now I'm gonna move into more of what we call a deadlift. So we're gonna practice picking some weights up off the ground or just lowering the weight towards the ground is a good way to think about it as well. So find a weight that you're comfortable with lowering up and down. We'll start here in about 15 seconds. We're gonna walk the feet about hip width apart. Make sure that you notice where your belly's positioned. So those hips tend to rock forward. Rock the hips back underneath you, drawing the stomach in. And then the upper body position, squeeze those shoulders back, just like we practiced with that seated row. From here, when you're ready, we're gonna practice that same position of the good morning, bowing at the hips. Yep, pushing the knees out, having a little bend in the knees, and then bowing down. If you feel comfortable to go all the way to the floor, I'm just holding the dumbbell by like the top of the dumbbell so that my hands actually really only go to like mid shin and then squeeze the glutes as you stand all the way up, bowing down, standing tall, really nice movement. Good, breathing in as you lower, breathing out as you stand. Awesome. So we'll take about another 20 seconds. Try to keep that mid back engaged, really draw those shoulders back, think tall chest as you lower down. Fantastic. Nice, Laura, good, Diane, moving well, Shirley. One or two more, over and up, and two, one, take a pause. We're working that upper body next. So heading to your push-up station. I'm gonna stand you up in between the push-up and the mountain climber. If anybody really wants to challenge your upper body, you can stay in that plank the whole time. Here we go, wide hand print. Setting each hand underneath the shoulder, walk the feet back. Remember, the higher your hands, the easier it's gonna be. When you're ready, don't let those hips drop down. Just invite that heart to lower down towards the wall, towards your couch or your chair. Good. Just, Diane, make sure that chair is gonna be really strong there. It makes me a little bit nervous that it might topple over, but I trust that you tested it. Sometimes that will help if you just put the chair against the wall as well. Squeeze the glutes, make sure you keep those hips level. Nice job, Laura. Sinking in, pushing up. Good, Shirley. Sorry, I kind of lost track of where we started. Let's go about 10 more seconds. Remember, if you need, just hold that plank. Maybe one more push up. Good, you can take that pause if you want. I'll give 10 seconds in between the push up and the mountain climber. If anybody wants that extra challenge, you can stay there. Stand it up. And then now we come back in, holding the top of that push up position. And then when you're ready, we'll start the mountain climber, breathing out as you lift that knee up towards the elbow. Chin drawn in, looking straight down between those hands. And sometimes the hips will tend to sway side to side here. So we're working more on that control of that motion. Excellent, 10 seconds to go. There you go, maybe one more on each leg. And two, one, and everybody rest. Standing it on up, and now we all get to sit on down, taking the band. Hi, Moose. We're like in the bowl of this park and there's like a walkway that goes around us. So Moose is just sitting here watching all the people and the dogs walk the perimeter. 
All right, as you come to see to go ahead and pick up that band, we're gonna put it around the one foot. Do you remember which foot you used last time? Try to use the other one this time. Give yourself a little bit more time, get everybody into position. We wanna sit right up on those sit bones, check in with that posture. And then we're gonna start by the hands reaching out, palms down towards the floor. When you're ready, breathing out as you draw the elbows back, breathing in on that forward reach. More than speed on this exercise, I like to hold in the back, kind of add that little bit of a pause that will usually challenge that mid back a bit more. And then just watch so you don't start to shrug the shoulders up. So I want you to depress, meaning draw those shoulders back and down. Try to breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. If your sinuses will allow, Good, we're over halfway through. Keep that rotation moving through the hands, palms down, palms up. Wonderful, reach. 10 more seconds. Ah, good, and be one more reach out, in, and everybody rest. Nice work. We're gonna stay seated for a second. We're gonna do a little bit of stretching and then we'll make our way to standing. <laughs> All right, so we've done that seated toe touch. Now we're gonna reach to the one side. So when I'm on the chair, I kind of shimmy my weight to one side of the bench or one side of the chair. See if you can hold on with the one hand. And now I'm gonna take that opposite hand to the opposite knee, still drawing the belly in and then sliding the hand down the shin, kind of reaching for that opposite ankle. Ah, and then breathe into the side of the body where you feel that tension. Make sure you don't get lightheaded here. And then when you're ready, sit back up and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So if you have room on your chair to shimmy across, I think it kind of helps to hold on with the one hand while the opposite leg comes that outer knee, bow the head down, slide the hand down. Pet the dog if he's nearby, just joking, except for Moose. Scratch your belly. <laughs> ah, one more breath or so. And then when you're ready, come back to seated. Excellent job. All right, friends, we're gonna go through that circuit one more time. If your energy's a little bit low, you know, just kind of keep yourself moving, but you don't have to do the full exercises. We're gonna be back to the deadlifts here in about 20 seconds. So as you come to standing, bring over the weights that you feel comfortable to move, but maybe will challenge you the most. Deadlift is kind of our opportunity to pick up our heaviest weights we have available. Buddy, there you go. Stop making it hard on yourself. All righty, and when you do bring that single or double weights over, if you have more than one weight, I like to hold it on the outer part of the legs. If you have single weight, I like to go in between the legs. All right, so set those feet, draw that stomach in. And then when you're ready, hinging at the hips, pushing through those legs, holding nice and strong through the belly and standing straight up, fantastic. Bowing down, knees push wide, standing tall. Good, nice, Laura. Really holding those shoulders back as you bow forward. Excellent, Diane, yep. Make sure you bend those knees as you bow down, bow down. Good, really great position. Strong, Shirley. Yep, squeezing those shoulders back, squeeze the bum, fantastic. 15 more seconds, friend. Controlling down. And then always use your judgment. Time is just a suggestion. Good. Final time, everyone. Controlling it down, standing tall. The next time you put it down, go ahead and rest the weight on the ground. Awesome. Making your way for your push-up station next. Moose, are you gonna do the push-ups? And move you just a little bit, friend. Thank you, Moose. All right, place one hand underneath each shoulder. Walk the feet back, draw that stomach in. And then when you get into position, you can go ahead and begin. Make sure you don't let those elbows shoot forward or shoot wide rather. Normally the elbows will shoot wide as the shoulders draw forward. So draw the shoulders back, draw that stomach in. Breathing in as you lower, breathing out as you push up and away. You don't like that skateboard, do you, Moose? Controlling down, pushing out. Awesome. Keep flexing those thighs. 
Holding those hips high, final time. And rest, either stay there on the hands or give a break off those arms, shaking it out for just a second. Coming into our final set of mountain climbers next. Place each hand down, walk the feet back out. When you're ready, breathing out as you lift that knee up, drawing it towards that same side elbow. Good. Practicing that engagement of your lower core. So the belly draws in as the knees raise up, help stabilize your spine. Good, final 10 seconds now. Keep those arms strong, nice straight elbows. And three, two, one, and rest. Awesome job. Coming back to standing. And go ahead and grab the band. But I'm gonna keep you standing this time. We're gonna do a little bit of variation. We're gonna do our pull aparts instead of our seated row. And it's gonna be a supinated grip. So as you pick up your band, like you're gonna hold a cup of soup, palms up towards the sky. Feet are pointing forward, belly's drawn in. And now I'm gonna go straight arms in front of the body. And then just like you're trying to pull the band apart, little fingers come together, breathing out as you squeeze those shoulders back. Good. Make sure you don't push the head forward as you open the hands. Try to hold that head and neck nice and neutral. Breathing in, breathing out. It's okay, Mr. Moose, we're almost done. Good. Try to flex the thighs, flex the quads. Squeeze the tush. Awesome, final time. And everybody rest. Ah. All right, if you're up for a little bit of balance work, stay standing with me. That concludes that circuit. We're gonna do a little bit of work from standing. And then we're gonna make our way, our final circuit's gonna be down on the ground, working our low back and our hip openers. But first, if you're up for working your balance just a little bit, maybe stand near something that you can help steady yourself. And then we're gonna start, let's have your left leg staying on down. Draw that belly up and in, squeeze those shoulders back. We'll come onto that single leg. If you wanna walk the foot against the other leg, make a little mini tree pose here. Eyes up, squeezing those shoulders back. Nice. Make sure you keep just a little bend in the leg that's supporting you. Shoulders down out of those ears, 10 seconds left. Moose is bored. <laughs> Good, almost there and take that pause. Good job. In between sides, rest the hands, walk the feet a little bit wider, and then we're gonna circle the hips. Puppy pup. <laughs> oh, I guess it could be a crying baby, huh? Circle those hips the other way. <laughs> Very nice. Ah, oh, get that little relief for that low back, loose, keeping those hips nice and loose. And now we'll walk the feet back in. And if you are mirroring me, now you're gonna balance on your right leg. So anchor yourself down, really emphasize drawing yourself up and in, hands to the sides. You can either just lift the other leg up or if you wanna set that foot against the shin. Ah. Very nice. And you know, wherever you are with your balance, maybe you're like holding on and practicing letting go. Almost there, I lost my balance, goodness. Focus too much on my dog. Two, one, and resting there. All right, shake it out. <sighs> shake out those arms. We're gonna do it one more time on each side. So we're gonna go back to the first leg. Hey, relax, relax, come on. You're really okay. All right, as we go back to that first leg, you can do the exact same thing or you can really lift that knee up. So with your left leg down, lift the right leg up. If you wanna rest it against that other one, you can. You just kind of hold it right, you can hover it over the ground. Some key things here, belly drawn up. We don't want those hips to kick out. So try to keep your hips and shoulders stacked right over each other. We're halfway through, palms are forward. We're really squeezing back that upper body, 10 seconds. Eyes looking ahead. Good focus, everybody. Two, one, and resting there. Ah, good job. All right, we got one more leg. 
Little hip rock in between sides. Awesome, this is gonna be our last exercise from standing, then we'll make our way to the ground. So walking the feet back in on the last bit of balance here with your right leg down, draw it on up and in. Two, one, here we go. Lucy pie. Oh, it's so upsetting, huh? You can't get to those dogs. <laughs> Eyes forward. I'm starting to wonder if I've got like a coyote in the area. He's really talking to me. We did see his coyote here last Thursday, but he was closer to the mountain. Good focus, friends. Five seconds to go. <laughs> Hopefully I'm distracting you with my chatter to the moose dog and rest. Woo! All right, balance work is all done. Let's grab some water. And as mentioned at the start of class, sometimes we start with the low back work. Today, we're gonna end with the low back work. So when you're ready, go ahead and kind of find a spot. Ideally, if you can put a mat on the ground, I'm gonna lower my screen on down here. Should probably entertain Moose. Usually he bites my head. All right. So as you come down, we're gonna make our way onto our backs. So coming down to the ground, making your way onto your back. We're gonna do a couple different exercises here. We're gonna be going twice through each movement for the exercises, not so much the stretching. So slowly lower yourself down. As you lie on your back, I like to roll to one side and really emphasize like drawing that shoulder blade back and down. And then I'll roll away and again, kind of roll that shoulder back and that's just gonna help you have a nice broad chest as you lie here. And then from there, check in with like your pelvis. If you feel a little bit uneven, you can just lift your hips, kind of square the pelvis a bit. Excellent. And while people are getting set here on the ground, we're gonna start <clears throat> with those windshield wipers like we did earlier from seated. So go ahead and make your, sure your feet are nice and wide, heads resting back. <clears throat> and then when you're ready, just nice and slow. Diane's already there, gently lowering the knees to one side and back. This is a nice one too. <clears throat> if you'd like, you can kind of imagine you're like a scarecrow lying on the ground and you can open your arms up to the sides, helps open up the chest a bit. And then check in with your head and neck position. So I'm exaggerating here, but sometimes our neck will get a little bit cranked and our chin really lifts up. So if you can lift your head, draw your chin in so you can kind of flatten that upper spine as much as you can. All right, once you finish those windshield wipers, keep your head where it is and now lift your feet off the ground and hug your legs in towards your chest. We call it our double knee to chest. And then we'll just lightly rock your body side to side. Try to do most of this just from like listening to me talk, especially if you have to like lift your head up and look at the screen. Try to just listen and we'll move together. All right, as you finish that double knee to chest, you're gonna return your feet with the knees bent back to the ground, about hip width apart. And our next exercise that we're gonna begin with is that abdominal draw. So you're gonna just kind of tune into that lower abdomen area and you're gonna focus to literally draw your belly and draw your spine in towards the floor and try to focus to push your belly out as you pull that lower spine to the floor. And this is the exercise for this set. We're just gonna breathe here. This is where I like to imagine, to kind of be playful. Imagine like you've got, I remember when I was a little kid, I had one of those little red whoopee cushions we like to put air in it. And so you can just imagine you're putting that little whoopee cushion underneath that lower spine. And now you're trying to make sure you don't let that air come into that whoopee cushion. Anytime you need to rest, just pause. Allow those hips to roll away. Feel the spine lift off the ground. And then when you've had that break, when you're ready to return, try to this time engage those smaller muscles of the pelvic floor. So you can imagine if you had to go to the bathroom and you just clench some of those smaller muscles, but do it without holding your breath. So breathe as you squeeze. <laughs> Maintaining that lower spine into the floor. When we come back for round two, we'll add the option of the heel slide. So if you feel fairly confident with this engagement of that lower spine, then we'll add a heel slide next round.
All right, friends, go ahead and rest. Return to that double knee to chest. We're gonna hug those legs back in. Rocking your body side to side. We're gonna get ready for that glute bridge next. To be our last exercise of this lower back sequence. And then we're gonna do it one more time through. Ah, good. So we've loosened up that lower spine. And then when you're ready, you're gonna return the feet back to the ground, maintaining that bend in the knees. Good. And then when we move into those bridge practice, it's going to be what we started with with the abdominal draw. So you still pull that lower spine into the floor, but now we're going to start to push into the heels and see if you can raise the hips up off the ground. Knees drive wide, gently raise the hips up, and then gently lower them down, trying to move one segment at a time. Keep your head back the whole time. So I rock the hips back, pull the belly in, breathing out gently as I push through the heels, raising those hips up. Nothing to prove here. Just feel the body fire. Try to engage those glutes and then gently lower on down. We're gonna spend about another 45 seconds here. Once you know the motion, I encourage you to close your eyes, tune into your body, breathing in as you lower, breathing out as you raise the hips up. Moose, moose. Good. Remember those lower muscles that we talked about, the pelvic floor when we are doing the abdominal draw? See if you can include that engagement here on the hip bridge. Take about another 15 seconds. Lower on down and raise up. Try to avoid any kind of pinching feeling in that lower spine or the front of the hips. When you finish that next bridge, take a pause. Ah. Good. Back to the windshield wipers, lowering the knees side to side. Ah, all right. And then our last time through, we're going to go back to the abdominal draw. And as mentioned, you can have the option to slide the heels this time. So how that works is I draw the belly in, I flatten that lower spine down, and then I can choose to start with the left leg. And I'm gonna extend the knee. So I'm gonna slide the heel out of that left leg, lowering the thigh towards the ground. And then trying to still hold the belly neutral as I slide the heel up back to its starting position. And then we're gonna alternate legs. So I would rest the low back as needed, rest the mid body, and then reestablish that strong mid body position. And then slide that opposite heel out and slide it up and in. So more control of movement than speed of movement. We're gonna continue to alternate sides. I'm gonna practice about three times each leg. Ah. Good. The whole purpose of this is to be able to maintain holding that lower spine into the ground as you gently move the legs. So it's a lot to coordinate. Be gentle with yourself. It's a great exercise to do to help prevent lower back pain. Anytime that I've had some flares in my low back, this is one of my favorite sequences. Sometimes I don't feel ready to have the heel slide, but just I find that I get some relief as I practice that abdominal draw. Now, depending upon any kind of injury that you might have, obviously, if you're having some lower back pain and you're doing an exercise that seems to increase it, then that's not the exercise for you in that moment of time. So always use your body's cues. All right, I finished three on each side. I kind of give you a moment to rest. And then it's gonna be our final time on that double knee to chest. So hugging the legs in once again. These are great exercises that you could also mimic in your bed. Like when you wake up in the morning, if you tend to be stiff in that lower spot, lower back, take the time that you're already there in your bed and do a couple of stretches, loosen your body up. All right, after you finish that double knee to chest, we're gonna come into our final little bit with the glute bridge. So I'm gonna keep the knees bent, rest the feet back down, readjust the head as needed. So my neck was starting to uh, reach up and in. 
I'm gonna lift my head back up, tuck my chin down and in. And then when you're ready, final time, practicing that bridge. Breathing out as you lift the hips up. Try to squeeze the tush, avoiding any kind of pinching, and then slowly lowering down. Good. We're gonna spend a full minute here practicing that movement. Lifting up, lowering down, then we'll do a couple stretches at the end. As you lift the hips up, you can also give a little stretch the back of the neck, tuck the chin in just a little bit more. Squeeze as much of the back of the body as you can. Got about 20 seconds left. Ah, good, nice fluid breathing. Keeping the hips strong, <clears throat> keeping that lower back strong as well. When you finish that last rep, go ahead and rest. Fantastic. So for the next stretches, we're gonna extend, go ahead and slide your left leg straight out on the ground and do an extended position. And then we're gonna interlace the hands, draw your right knee up towards the chest. Let's revisit those ankle circles that we did from seated earlier on. So go ahead and roll that ankle around. Good, and then change directions, roll the ankle the other way. Excellent, and then the knee that you're hugging in, see if you can just gently pull the knee across towards the opposite shoulder. Idea would be to kind of stretch the hip a little bit. Breathing lightly here. Ah. Couple more breaths. Fantastic. And then when you're ready, go ahead and release that leg. You're going to slide that leg straight out and then switch sides. Bring the other knee up. Interlace the hands in front of the knee. Hug that leg in. Ankle rolls first. Anywhere between five and 10 times. Very nice, change directions, roll the ankle the other way. And then just kind of tune into your breath as well. When you're ready, moving into that glute stretch, hug that leg across the body, looking to open up that outer hip a bit. Keep the head and neck relaxing back. Close the eyes and breathe. Good, when you're ready, gently release that leg. And then depending upon where you're most comfortable, if you can extend both legs straight out on the ground, just take a moment to lie flat. I invite you to take one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart area, center your head, close those eyes, and just take a moment here to breathe. We are all done to the day for the day here with our movements. So just now, some time to be still. Tune into your body. Kind of take a break out of your head. We tend to just run our mind all day long, thinking, 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 focused on what's next. So just take this moment to be still. It's a great way to help reduce anxiety, reduce our tension and stress. Express a little bit of gratitude for your body. Fantastic. Please take as long as you'd like. And then when you're ready, kind of bend your legs up, maybe just roll your body to one side. Take a moment for yourself. No time to hurry. <sighs> I'm gonna go ahead and kind of stop our live session or recording session here, and then I'll hang out with everyone that's here live. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. If you have a glass of water nearby, go ahead and finish your drink before we conclude on what's ever next and keep moving until we see each other to move together next time. Thanks so much, friends.